importing, red footage, proxies, oh my. Get your pen and paper ready, kids, because in this Making the Short episode, we're going to do some learning. Holy shit, this is men, 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 men. Hello, it is I, Tim, with Mars Go Home, and today we're going to do some quick housekeeping. Before we jump into cutting and dicing our footage up and winning all the awards, we need to find a way of making our lives a wee bit easier. And today, we're working with RED 8K footage, and how we work with RED is slightly different than any other format. I've already offloaded the cars and placed them in their respective folders, and now we need to import these hefty fellas into our NLE of choice. I'm using Adobe Premiere in this example. How we handle red footage properly in Premiere Pro. Now make sure you are in the latest update of Adobe Premiere. Uh, I'm on 2023 and we are going to use the media browser. This is super important. In a lot of cases, we can just drag and drop our footage into the project panel or even right click and import footage. But with RED files, that's not the proper way. You see, RED creates segmented R3D files for safety reasons while recording as well as being compatible with all hard drive formats. File grows bigger than four gigabytes, then RED will segment those files up and the media browser will read them correctly as one single file. Like kittens escaping out of a box and media browser herds all those little cute fur balls back into one box. Here's a shortcut tip. Tilde key and most, if not all, Adobe programs will make any window your mouse is hovering over full screen and vice versa. Back, back, tilde, tilde, tilde. All red footage will import default as log 3G10 red Y gamut RGB, which will give us all the image data and full dynamic range the camera gives us when recording. My cinematographer and colorist created a LUT to load into the camera on set so we will use that LUT as a base while recording. Those LUTs are included in the file folders that RED creates, so life becomes a little bit easier. And it is this cube file. Let's go ahead and grab one file and just bring it in here. We're gonna change the sequence settings for now. Close this up. When applying these LUTs in Premiere, we're gonna use the Lumetri color in the Creative tab. This will place the LUT at the end of the image chain. That way, any adjustments beforehand won't mess up the output image. If you add it before any color adjustments, then you're adding adjustments to the LUT, and we don't want that. We want the adjustments, then the LUT. Hi, Tim from the future here. Suppose you're concerned with the color when editing, whether you're color grading in Premiere, or maybe you have the director or producer hovering over your shoulder with their heavy breathing asking you why the color looks so bland. A more proper way of handling LUTs for RED would be to download the IPP2 LUTs provided by RED on their site. To grab those, visit RED.com, click on the support, then downloads, and navigate towards the bottom of the page. You'll see a link to download the IPP2 output presets under the other section. Once downloaded, you'll see a bunch of LUTs from Rec 709 to Rec 2020 in the folder. I tend to stick with Rec 709, but I'm an old man dog stuck in his ways. But choose the working space you prefer. If you look at the clip's master properties, I tend to match the bottom parameters with the IPP2 LUT. How you apply the LUTs is user specific, but I like to add them to an adjustment layer. And really quick, how adjustment layers work in Premiere is bottom to top. It applies the bottom layer first, then the second, third, fourth, and so on. So I like to use the IPP2 LUT on the top adjustment layer. This will be the last layer on the image chain. And we want to stay in IPP2 for as long as possible until it's time to convert it officially. We want to try and avoid baking any color into our footage or proxies at this time. We can choose a LUT and place it into the creative look. This will be more accurate. Then on let's say the third adjustment layer, we can place the LUT created for onset preview. I'm not entirely sure if this onset LUT was log 3G10 to Rec 709, so that would be something I need to confer with my cinematographer. Nonetheless, this is probably the best practice if you intend to do your color correction or grade inside Premiere. For this project, I'll be exporting it to a colorist who works inside DaVinci Resolve, so I'm not too bothered with this step. I just wanted to pop in and say all this because I'm a gentleman, and the weather's pretty nice here in the future too. Now, back to past Tim. Thank you for that, future Tim. You're welcome, past Tim. 
Now, I'd like to double check the default output transform settings on each of the clips. We select the footage, go to effects controls, and if you can see to the left here, there's another tab. If we select that tab, it'll bring up information about the clip. Usually you don't want to mess with anything in this area, except I want to look at the very, very bottom. Just briefly make sure everything is perfectly set. Mainly the color space and the gamma curve. Make sure it's on red wide gamma, not rec 709, and log 3G10. And we are good. Other than that, we are not going to mess with anything else. Proxy time. Why use proxies? Well, if your computer is a potato, it may struggle to play back large files. Red has done an amazing job at optimization, but sometimes it just isn't enough. So we need to work with smaller files. This is important because when you're in editorial, we don't want to worry about color correction, color grade, VFX, or compositing. All we want to focus on is edit, pacing, and cuts. And if your computer is struggling with the playback, you won't get a good sense of pacing. And this is essential. I like to make it good practice to create proxies. My motto is, it's better to have them and not need them, than it is to need them and not have them. Check out the big brain on bread! So I want to make sure my proxies aren't stretched out or squashed. So let's make sure our dimensions are correct and create a preset for our proxy footage. The good thing about this is it gives us full control and the power over our project. And we only need to do this once. So the extra work will be worth it and it'll be fast. In the export tab, we want to make sure that we are on QuickTime. Now QuickTime versus H.264. QuickTime gives us bigger files and it plays better than H.264. However, H.264 has smaller files, but it uses more CPU power due to how compressed they are and the calculations that it needs to do to read that compression. Back in our export area, make sure we are on QuickTime. We're gonna come up to our preset area here on the three little dots and click More Presets. In the search area, we're going to type in proxy and we're going to click on the QuickTime format and press OK. Now, in the video section, we're going to keep it at Apple ProRes 422, but in the frame size, we want to uncheck it. We need to do some math here. And if I pull up a calculator, bring that down here. And our footage is 92 divided by 4. I think I'd be good with that. How I would do it is divide it by 2, 4, 6, 8. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 2048. And that gives us basically 2048 by 1080. Perfect. We're going to come back up to the preset area. And we're going to click the three dots again. And we're going to save the preset. And we're going to call this the... QT Proxy 2048. Name it whatever you want. Hit OK. Now let's bring up the media encoder. If we come down to the preset browser, click on the plus sign and say create ingest preset, not encoding, ingest preset, it should bring us this window. Again, let's name this and we're going to call this ingest QT proxy 2048 come down to the transfer destination and we're going to click on transcode files to destination make sure this is on quicktime and we're going to browse our location and if you remember we have a proxy folder all right hit okay back to premiere we're going to go to edit Click on our footage. Make sure we are all at the same size at 8K. We'll deal with those guys later. Just selecting the 8K versions. Card one. We are going to right click, go to proxy, create proxy. It'll bring up this little window here. And we are gonna add the ingest preset. Now the ingest preset places it somewhere on your hard drive and I forgot to check where it went. The easiest way I can find it is through the Listery app that I have on my machine by double tapping control and just type in ingest 
and there it is the first thing that comes up is right here I am going to right click that and open the containing folder go back to Premiere and we're gonna click the add ingest preset and if I hit control G it'll bring up that folder that I have last open I love it, it saves so much time we're gonna highlight that open there it is ingest QT proxy 2048 I want to add a watermark to it and I want to choose our destination and again I can open up the folder where I want it to it's just easier for me to do it this way oh footage proxies go back here and it'll bring it all the way up select folder minimize that and now I'm gonna hit OK now it's gonna create proxies and if we monitor our media encoder it'll bring in all our footage and start transcoding them all to proxies and there are a lot now would be a good time to go boil some eggs because this is going to take some time we'll come back when it's done you turn it on it prevents it from splashing up in your face now i'm going to switch to high okay we're back i baked the cake boiled some eggs i played solitaire I lost and now let's see how our proxies look so let's just grab a clip and throw it down here um, the cool thing here is on the clip itself you can tell there's another icon here and if we hover over it it says proxy status it is off but how do we turn the proxy on good question uh, we are going to come over to the program monitor here and on the little plus icon it says button editor we're gonna click on that and we're gonna find this little toggle proxies button we're going to take it and drag it to our toolbar here. Now, if we click this, it'll enable the proxy to be played. And okay, it rolling. is smooth. Smooth as butter. Whereas if we turn it off, try this a few times, computer did not like it. Okay, I'm rolling. It is a little jittery. Still plays, but it's a little jittery. I feel safer with the proxies on when I'm just doing basic editing. One last thing I'd like to do, as you can see, I have four audio tracks here. We didn't use any audio from the camera. This was strictly for reference only. Uh, we recorded audio on a separate device. So what I want to do is I want to combine all these down to one track. And how we're going to do that is we are going to highlight all our footage here, right click on it, and we're going to go to modify audio channels. We want to keep it on mono. Instead of four, we want one track. And that will squish all of it down to one track. Hit OK. Let's go ahead and just throw another piece in there. And there you go. It's all one track. Now, go be awesome and edit your masterpiece. Because that's what I'm going to do. If you found this helpful and want to track the process of this series, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to this here fine channel. Oh, and hit the bell notification thingy. That squid lord will bless you. And until next time, stay cool, stay rad, stay creative. turn it on, it prevents it from splashing up in your face.